Okay, so here we go, fishing today with Doc B. Say hello to Doc. Hey, Doc, how are you? We're on our modified Yamaha Complete with four rod holders and a fish finder. And as we let our vessel down into the water, you can see how little of our trailer needs to be submerged. Thanks to the Mary-Kate Liquid Rollers, separate video, link in the description. We're able to spin our boat now around on a dime as we're on our way heading out. Uh, that is also as a result of an add-on product, Jet Boat Pilot's Lateral Thruster. So let's head on out in search of summer flounder here in the New York area, known as Fluke. So we're heading westbound this morning, and uh, we'll be at our destination in a minute here, and you'll see it does not take us long at all to hook up. Josh. Yeah. Fish on. about 15 inches maybe take it easy buddy so here in the New York region uh, in order to keep a fluke they need to be 19 inches in length that's a measurement with the mouth closed to the tip of the tail uh, unfortunately most of the ones that we've been getting uh, in the Long Island Sound have been less than that fish on Another fluke. Ah, it's been a while. Let me uh, get a measurement. Sixteen and a half. Wow. On the teaser. Mm -hmm. For the most part, the rig we're using today is either a Spro or a John Skinner Bucktail in the one ounce range, uh, tipped with a Berkeley Gulp uh, four inch right, swimming mullet, variety of colors. Uh, it's a high-low rig, so on the high, we usually have a hollow point teaser, and that'll more than likely also be tipped with Coming. similar gulp. This is a nice little uh, gadget. Like that. I'm getting the net out because I'm very happy. Two fluke. Boom, boom. lines back in also you want to take a look at your, the characteristics of your pole so in other words if I'm going like this right now look see the tip of my rod it's shaking like crazy but the bait isn't moving that much now watch see the difference yeah. see the bait now yeah see how it's like so what fluttering? you like to do it then? You like to do like You want to flutter it, okay. but with this rod, with the tip being kind of soft, I, I have to give. This is ideal. You see that? Yep. I didn't realize that. I used to sit there and just shake it like too fast. Yeah, it depends on the rod because if you have a a stiffer backbone. Yeah, maybe that's part of then it. you're gonna get a better jig there we go baby 
this is a, a bed of fish right here. This is a bed of fish. No, it's a double it's sea robin hit. Triple. No there's, a, there's a third one following the other two. Oh, one's foul hooked. Nice. Sea robin follies. All right. So these are sea robins. In fact, they are edible, but it is not our target fish. Uh, they are kind of bony. They do have some sharp spikes on their back. It can be quite painful if you uh, get stuck with them when you're trying to de-hook one. Uh, but they are a nuisance fish uh, for our purposes uh, in what we're after. I'm gonna give it uh another shot and um i want to move back to where we yeah we kind of drifted out a little, bit, a little deep here huh a little deeper yeah we're at uh 20 feet we'll see what we got Pound sea robin right here. Oh, he ate my gulp. Come on, give it up. He gave it up. He gave up the gulp. He did. I got him back. Woohoo! <laughs> I'll show you the drift sock. All right, so you hear me mention drift sock. You know, with fluke, ideally you want to have a speed over ground, uh, somewhere between three quarters and a little over one mile per hour as a drift speed. Uh, unfortunately, in a heavy wind situation, you know, the boat is just being pushed across that surface sometimes too quick. Uh, we throw out the drift sock and that is the solution. You could see it here, a uh, line extending out the side of the boat, and this is what it looks like uh, from underwater. Basically a parachute that creates a drag and it'll slow down your drift speed. Fish on. Fluke. Back to fluke. Getting closer. Little one? Yeah, it's a little bit bigger. It was about uh, an inch or two shy. Let's mark the spot. All right. I went with the heavier weight. I wasn't down there long at all. Fluke. Fluke. Yep. Unfortunately, they're all in the same size. All right, we might have hit into another little spot. Let me mark it. 
pakai Okay, so we're making a move, uh, gonna do another drift. We're getting in real tight to the beach, let the wind blow us off. Uh, we have a draft of only about 14 inches, and well, boy, we really uh, took advantage of that on this one. Uh, take a look. Let me spin it around so I can get the drop sock out. What I call a drop sock. <laughs> nice with a jet is not really worrying about hitting bottom with the prop yeah me too yep Seven, but oh, it's shallow right here. Gotta not get on the gas so that we uh, don't suck up a rock. You get on the gas, the thing could suck up a rock. But I haven't heard it. Usually I hear it going into the impeller. I hear ting, 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 ting little pebbles, yeah. But that was close. We were, yeah, now it's saying 10 feet. Now, if we had an out drive, we would have slammed bottom right there. All right, so it's always a good idea to get a sense of what your target fish is feeding on. Often this is accomplished during the fillet process. When we open up the fluke stomach, we could see uh, perhaps maybe remnants of their last meal. But uh, in this particular instance, uh, this fish presented what it's been feeding on uh, front out and center. I mean, this was like a scene out of The Exorcist. No. Nah. 17. Not quite. Not quite. Pretty fish. Yep. Yeah. Pretty fish. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. Whoa, did you see that squid come out? I did. Look at that squid that came out. Holy cow, that was a big squid. Yes, it was. All right, so we know what they're feeding on. That's a fluke. You can see the way the rod is, is going like taps. everywhere so look what he threw up oh yeah I see that. we got sand eels coming up little baby sand eels all over the back of the boat
Okay, people, that's going to do it for this trip. A great day with Doc B. We ended up with about a half a dozen fluke. Unfortunately, none of them of size were able to bring them home. So regardless if you have a fishing boat or not, just get out there and fish. A quick PSA. People, please, these balloons, these party balloons, they do not belong in the water. Please don't let them go. They end up coming down, landing in an area that is incredibly harmful to our marine life be considerate all right if you like these videos you enjoy this free content please subscribe it's free take advantage and just make sure that you support your local bait and tackle shops always there for you doing a great job this is leo j signing off